Good morning, mathematicians. We are thinking about week 27. It is Monday. We're going to be thinking about all kinds of content this week, and we're starting with multiplying decimals. Now, I want to show you what I've done here with multiplying decimals. First of all, I have taken my five tenths, and I have shown that in my table, right? So I have boxed in this pink area, this pink rectangle, I have bought five out of 10 tenths. Now, I didn't shade them in blue yet. All I did was box that. The next thing that I did was I looked at six tenths, but I looked at that horizontally and noticed I boxed six out of 10 for these rows, right? That showed my six tenths. Now, what I then took my highlighter and highlighted was where that overlap occurred. So the overlap occurred here. This is the moment that we see our product in multiplying decimals because it's the overlap between, in this case, my vertical five tenths and my horizontal six tenths. Sometimes you'll actually see it modeled and you'll have to determine what the factors are that were multiplied together. But I could do that by looking one way, in this case, looking, uh, vertically and saying, how many of these columns have shading? Well, five have shading, so this is five tenths. Then I could look vertically and I could say, how many of these rows have shading? Six have shading, so it's six tenths, right? Now, once you add up those individual squares, you'll see that there are 30 hundredths in there. We have a five by six array. That's 30 hundredths, which of course means the same thing as three tenths. So that is my answer for number one. Now, in my second question, and I believe this is the first time that we have seen adding fractions in our spiral review, we are looking at I. With I, let me cover this so we can talk about them one at a time. With I, I see one fourth plus two fourths. When I have denominators that are the same, just like I saw in previous grades, I can add those denominators or excuse me, I can carry those denominators over because this is like considering something that is cut up into four parts. The same item is cut up into four parts. And so, of course, we can consider those parts being cut out of four, okay? Now I can perform the operation on the top. So I have one plus two equals three. That is my answer for the first one. Now, the big difference with this second problem is that my denominators did not the same. So initially, this was my problem. I just rewrote that one fourth plus one half. My denominators are not the same. However, I know I can add these together because there is certainly a relationship between four and two, and certainly between one half and other fractions. So what I have to do is think about an equivalent fraction, right? I think about one fourth plus something over four. So notice I circled these because I want to call your attention to the fact that these are equivalent fractions. These would sit on the very same place of a number line. We have not changed the value at all, but we have one half and that equals two fourths, but now I've converted this into a problem that I can solve because look, those denominators are now the same. So I can carry my four over here to my answer and I can say one plus two equals three. This is where, yes, we get to the answer of three fourths here, just like three fourths here, okay? All right, let's take a look at another multiplying decimals. But this one was unique because in this problem, we were looking at two grids. When I look at two grids, Likely, like I see here, one of those numbers is going to be greater than one. So I see one whole and two tenths. I have shown one whole and two tenths vertically because I'm looking at the columns, right? So I box those. Now I'm showing six tenths horizontally. They're laying on their side. I'm looking at the rows here, right? Now, just like we saw at the very beginning of today's questions, I decided only to highlight where the product is. 
the product is going to be where those columns and rows, where they overlap. So I'm not going to include this because that didn't overlap with my one and two tenths. I'm not going to highlight this because that did not overlap with my six tenths, right? I'm only highlighting this area. Now, you can go ahead, once you know where that overlap is, you can go ahead and add those individual squares. But more efficiently, we can count and see we have 6 times 12 is 72. And I remember that these individual squares have a value of 100. So certainly, I have to put my decimal to reflect 72 hundredths. All right, our next question. We are cruising through our Monday. Our next question is about counting up. This is a strategy that some like when they think of subtracting decimals. It does not have to be your go-to strategy, but it does have to be something that we're familiar with. So that, for instance, if you were shown a problem that was solved like this and asked to find the error, we need to understand it well enough to be able to find uh, an answer to a question like that. Okay. So really, boys and girls, remember this almost as a map. This is our starting point. This is our destination. So we're going to start with this value, 124 and 36 hundredths, and we're going to add values until we get all the way up to the destination, which is 417 and 34 hundredths. Let me show you line by line how I did this. The very first thing that I did is I thought about my decimal values. Now, when I started at 36 hundredths, I knew I wanted to get to 34 hundredths. Wow, 36 hundredths to 36 hundredths. That is very close to going up 100 hundredths, right? Because I know I'm going to have to move these decimals. It's not like I'm going to add zero. I've got to move these decimals to go from 36 to 34. So if I add 98, that get 98 hundred specifically that gets me to my target of 34. So that's the first thing I did. I did 124 and 36 hundredths plus 98 hundredths equals, of course, I grew by one in my ones place, 125 and 34 hundredths. Now I'm to that target a decimal value. And now I can think a little bit, okay, 128. Or excuse me, 125 and 34 hundredths. What do I see that I can add to get closer to this? My next add was 280. Now that didn't take me all the way to 217, but again, it was kind of a friendly add that I can do in my head. I had this number, I rewrote it here. I added 280 and that got me to 405 and 34 hundredths. But I still had a little bit to go from 405 to 417. I still needed to add 12 more. I added those 12 holes, and now I got to 417 and 34 hundredths. Now, I got from, again, my starting point to my destination, but these were all the ways that I got there. So I'm not actually to the answer. What I've done is used the strategy. What I have to do now in order to really solve this is to add these quantities together to find out that part, okay? So I'm going to add 98 hundredths to 280 to 12. When I add that together, here's my whole number 280, here's a whole number 12. So I know that I'm at 292 and I have this decimal value, 98. This is the actual answer, okay? Boys and girls, in this question, we were required to use a certain strategy, and that certain strategy is counting up, right? This is the answer. We can get to that in other ways, but we were asked specifically to think about counting up. All right, let's go to the very last question for Monday. We are going to play a little bit powers of 10, which will read powers of 10 even tomorrow and Thursday in this week 27 of Spiral Reviews. We are asked here to use these numbers to create a multiplication equation, right? So an equation, of course, has something, then we're going to multiply, then it has another factor, and it equals a certain value. That's why we call it an equation. 
it's really showing like both sides of the scale. This is equal to this. All right, since I know that I am going to be multiplying here, what jumps out to me is to start with 13 hundredths. If I have 13 hundredths and I multiply by exactly 10, that's going to move that decimal point one time because look what's happened. I have made this one 10 times greater. So I've moved it to the ones place. I have made this three and the hundredth 10 times greater. So I've moved it to the tenth place. That really jumps out at me with those numbers. Next, we're going to create a division equation to represent that. So that is going to really kind of undo what we're doing here. If I just take this value, 1 and 3 tenths, but now divide it by 10. Now those values are all going to become 10 times less, right? They're going to become 1 tenth of themselves because we're moving those values. We're making them smaller. All right, boys and girls, that finishes up Monday.